Giannis seems to have benefited from that, and, and just he, he just seems like a really genuine, genuinely good guy. And I wish the Celtics would have drafted. I'm gonna just put that out there right now. Um, I was convinced that they were gonna draft him because they traded up that year to yeah. like I think it was 13, and I knew that. Milwaukee was going to draft Giannis because Giannis was John Hammond's kind of guy. I, I, I was convinced right. that that was going to happen. So when they moved right. up to 13, I'm spending all this damn time trying to Giannis Antetokounmpo, A-N-T-E-T-O-K-O-U-N-M-P-O, A-N-T-E-T, just working on how to say it, how to spell it, because right. I'm going to be spelling it for the. And then when they took my good friend Kelly Olenek, who I love, he ain't Giannis. <laughs> wasn't that, yep. He wasn't that day and hasn't been a day since. Love him, though. Well, still love him. So one of my one of my favorite interviews was actually learning about the Celtics interest in Giannis and traveling to Greece. And Austin Ainge told me he was like, look, if we had known Giannis would grow like two inches once he got to the NBA, like obviously this would be a different story, you know, like he would not have fallen to where he had fallen to. And hey, this is comedian J.L. Covan, best known for his impression of Donald Trump. I'm going to be at City Winery in Boston for one night only, July 26th at 8 p.m. Hope to see you there. Learning about the time where Danny Ainge came to Greece and he came to a road game uh, in a place called Volos and the fans were heckling him, right? They don't know who he is at first. They think Danny Ainge is an opposing Greek GM. Then they find out he's Danny Ainge. And then they start screaming like insults and curses. And then they start screaming Lakers. And then he realizes they're making fun of him because they realize he's Danny Ainge. And <laughs> it's just so great. It's just like, you know, in this place in Volos, he has no idea what they're saying. And then finally they're like, dude, like he's a famous GM. <laughs> so <laughs> um, he was definitely there. And uh, yeah, I thought you guys would appreciate the Celtics anecdote. But uh, Hammond told me about the Darko thing too. He was like, Look, I knew Giannis wanted his family to come over there. And he's like, I think that's one of the biggest reasons Darko didn't work out because he just he didn't have mm -hmm. that support. So, mm -hmm. you know, the book talks about how lonely Giannis was that rookie year because he didn't have his family. And I don't think people realize how close he was to wanting to quit and go home. And and mm -hmm. so there's there's a chapter about that because it is really hard when you come overseas to, to play in the NBA. Mm -hmm.